Hello my loves, I'm Ellie Frost. Thank you so much for watching my channel, being here and joining us in rapidly healing from narcissistic abuse and not only healing, but also manifesting our best lives and coming into our authentic power, our sovereignty, our truth, learning how to be an energetic match to everything we want in our lives, as well as rapidly healing from trauma, from abuse cycles, from everything associated emotionally, physically, spiritually, energetically, and psychically from being under this type of attack. It's an assault. It's an assault on your system on every level. That's why we do a multidimensional um, level of healing because it's a multidimensional attack. So th I, I am very conscious of not giving you too much, giving you tools and and transformation, not too much information that you can find elsewhere. But I do feel like it's important for me to just give you a, a nutshell um, snapshot of different types of narcissists to how to know. So the most important question you need to know is, am I dealing with a narcissist? Now, they, they are a soul detached human shell with an entity of consciousness. Consciousness is just like a collection of ideas and thoughts that they are cooperating with that's kind of leading their behavior, which is why they do the same patterns. And if you know it's a narcissist, then you know it's bad news, right? But I am gonna briefly give you some of the types, right? And they come up with new types all the time. So you don't wanna to get too, in, too involved in the detail and obsessing over the narcissist. We do wanna come into self and self-sourcing, self-healing, self-sovereignty. But it is important to know, right? So. I'll give you three types. An overt narcissist is what they call the grandiose narcissist. So they're the ones that are often very charismatic. They will, they'll often be the ones that might be more physically aggressive if they're over, but not necessarily. They can have overt and covert types, which is why it's like a minefield sometimes. And you're better off just to know, is it a narcissist? Because they do shape shift a lot. They'll shape shift a lot. But I mean, they're, they're generally the ones that are more extrovert. That's the best way of explaining it. A covert narcissist, so is likely to be more introvert. So the way they go through the sequence is the love bombing and the hoovering and the abuse cycles, the manipulation, the devaluing, um, invalidating you, dehumanizing, objectifying you. If it's an overt narcissist, it's like to be more aggressive in what so they might actually say words that are more aggressive and you know bully you in a more outspoken way. And a covert narcissist is likely to do it in more passive aggressive ways so that they just completely withdraw. They withdraw love, attention, won't talk to you, ignore you. Um I've had that. My ex-boyfriend was well, malignant covert, and like, you know he might lock me out the house or something, you know, or lock me out the room just for speaking to my friend on the phone, doing anything he didn't like, right? They're all control freaks. Um, they're all bullies. They're all the same. It's just that if they're more extrovert or, or in... To me, there's the three main things to know is whether they're more extrovert. If they're more extrovert, they're going to use words. They're going to be more um, obviously aggressive in some way, physically or just emotionally. And if they're covert, it's it's less obvious. So it's sometimes harder to spot. It's passive aggression. Yeah, with a covert, it can be harder. It was harder for me on my last, uh, not, my last ding, 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 last round through all the crap, um, <laughs> last lesson learned. Um, because at, be, at the beginning, you might think it's a mistake. It's all done behind the scenes. And so is a lot of their betrayals and manipulations. But they're all the same. They're all sneaky. They all lie. They all betray. But one is more off, obviously extrovert sometimes. Right? And other people will see them as that, more, more charismatic, the overt. And the covert might come across more shy. Now, what was a real sticker for me, cause, and some of them are more malignant than others. So, and you might have one that's more vulnerable. So my last partner was what was a malignant, so capable of really terrible things, like completely morally corrupt, but you wouldn't tell. It was all done, you know, you, you, it's like a spider's web, right? Malignant covert narcissist, which means like the, probably one of the most spiteful people on the planet. 
when you leave us one of those, right? One, they're difficult to spot because they're introvert. Two, they will normally show up as the victim. You know, he had a long story about how his marriage, he had a long marriage, but they were like separated and it didn't work and how badly he was treated by his wife and how much he wanted romance and love. But he was such a good man, such a good man, you know? And he wanted to stay for his adult children who had actually left the house, right? Not that I knew that. Um, he wasn't in the house. We He lived pretty much full time out of it. But um, the story of his family and how hard done by he was and how much he really wanted love. And he's the victim. He's the victim. He's the victim. One of the most dangerous, spiteful people I've ever met. Absolutely. I've, I mean, if, <laughs> with the overt narcissists I've met, they're bullies. But I mean, you know where you are with a covert. He, they show up vulnerable. Right. So they they look like something else. In fact, you'll probably believe their story with a covert narcissist. They generally won't. They're too you know, egotistical. They're, they won't admit their weaknesses so much. Right. But with a covert, they will. And if you get a malignant covert like I did, oh, gosh, if you just not won the lottery. You're in, you're in for a ride, right? Because these people will show up as the victim. You'll probably buy into their story, give more of yourself than usual. They'll be passive aggressive. So it's like a slow death because like, you don't really see it coming. And then the, the I mean, in my case, the amount of lies, the web of destruction, the everything they present that they want, you know, he, he was always talking about respect, but he was disrespecting everyone in his life, multiple partners, I have, I will never know the truth about what the situation was with his marriage, ever. I mean, <laughs> ever. Whether they were still entangled, what was going on, I'll never know. Um, I tried to find out and uh, I could never get to the truth and I had to exit, <laughs> exit, exit, exit the atomic bomb. But when you do leave, like with a co malignant covert, probably with any narcissist, but particularly with someone like him, it's, you know, not only, they, they just get raged. It's so much rage in them. All narcissists have a lot of rage, but I mean, they don't just get angry that they lost you. They they want to know they hurt you. So when I left him and he knew it was it, like the things he went out of his way to do to terrorise me, literally terrorise me, um, were just out of this world. Out of this world. I mean, with the overt ones, they're bullies, they're aggressors, but like, this was just spite. I mean, how can you be so spiteful to someone that unconditionally loved you? I was so loving and giving to this man and I was so tolerant. I mean, I would never do it in that way again, but I'll never be with another narcissist. Do you know what I mean? I'd already met him when I was at a time when I was just rebuilding my life and he, he, <laughs> he watched me rebuild it and tried to detonate everything in it, which he can't. Um, but you know, at the time it was extraordinary, it was very traumatizing, but I was healed enough to recover quicker. Right. I was just blown away by the, I think out of all of them, he's probably the most spiteful one. But again, when I met him, he would, he, I was not seeing that coming because he seemed like the most vulnerable one. I did get a bit bored of his stories. All of them are boring. Like, you know, they can't connect on a level of humanity. So if, you know, if they don't traumatise you, they're not bringing drama and chaos and into your life. When you actually talk to them, they're really quite boring, a lot of them. You know what I mean? And that's not about intelligence. You know, you can have fun with anyone. I have fun with my dogs. They don't even talk. It's not like you have to be on the same level um, in any kind of intellectual way, because that can be boring. I don't want to talk intellectually all the time. I want to have fun with people. But they really can't connect, any narcissist. So when they're not causing chaos, when you actually sit and think, you realise all the connection is a lie. But he knew how to reflect to me. So I said a story earlier where my mum would never hold me as a child. I can remember being on the floor at four years old and watching her hold my brother. They'd rub everything in my face. My parents would neglect me really badly and do some terrible things. And this, you know, he, he knew that to like hold me and stuff. There was things in it. So what's the unmet need that is the illusion? And of course, he was telling me so many lies. And I guess there's a part of me at the time that wanted to believe it. When we first start seeing it, I think there's a part that wants to believe it. And there was this extremely strong pill. Like, again, he was a master manipulator. He's been doing it for years. Goodness knows how many lives he had in terms of, uh, you know, is it a double life? Was it a triple life? I mean, the minute we broke up, he's already living with someone else and <laughs> paraded it in my face. You know, someone that he'd already, I think, been in, well, I know, he'd been in a relationship with as well, as well as other people. I mean, it will blow you away. Sometimes it's hard, again, I talk to my clients, it's hard to imagine because you can't put yourself in their shoes. You could never lie to people at that level. You could never deceive at that level. And you certainly could never be so spiteful to someone that you loved. So for us to try and 
imagine what they do until you've studied it and know like as much as I do about it. You can't imagine it, but it's real. It's real. If you're with a malignant covert where there's no doubt they've got loads of people, loads of um, people they're hanging on and for various things. If it's a female, she's probably got loads of men that she's playing against each other because men are more competitive naturally than women. So she'll play them, make them jealous, often parade their latest person, their latest um, partner in people's faces so that other people compete. They, 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 they bond on trauma, on jealousy, on negativity. So they, they'll do it to hurt you, make you jealous, but they'll also do it if they've got other sources of supply, right? To make the other sources of supply step up. So either get more hooked on them, want to talk to them more. If they're draining their resources, like um, financial ones, get that out of them. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. And with the malignant covert, they will absolutely kick you when you're down hard, as hard as they can. That man took me for <laughs> all my resources and I had hardly anything to give and everything I did, I shared and I was building and it was, it was just a disgrace. It was just a disgrace. They won't, they won't join you in a joint vision. They won't contribute fairly. You will make excuses, especially for a vulnerable covert one, because you're, you'll want to make up for all the pain they've been through because you'll think you can relate to it. They're not in pain at all. They're a complete manipulator, morally corrupt, saying whatever will appeal to your uh, empathy. Now, an overt one tends to be more of a brash bully. So they're kind of, you don't, you don't get hooked in the same way. The covert one, I did not see it coming in the same way because of the manipulation tool of their vulnerability. That, so if you were with someone, it could be man or woman, it's got a sob story, they might lead with that, whereas an overt one won't. And a malignant one is going to, my brother's a malignant narcissist, the things they will do to you, that my brother pretty much wanted to push me to suicide. You know, the things they will do to you will be the 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 um extreme of the spectrum. That's probably you don't need to know much more than are you dealing with a narcissist. But that you do need to know that it's just like you know, if they're more on the extrovert or introvert scale. But it's very possible, right? Because they're shape shifters. Even when I was talking about like the kind of sex one, it's like you'll notice that they shape shift, that they actually can look differently. They project an image on you in, in your, they're messing with your brain. So you can actually, when you leave them, you'll see their face differently sometimes. They know, uh, that sounds strange, but they really do shape shift. They're presenting an illusion. They're presenting everything that you want to see, even sometimes their physical experience, um, appearance in the physical realm. They'll, they'll project an image on you. They can do it with their words and uh, they can make you see what they want you to see. So like you know what they look like, but you'll be also like attracted or seeing other things. It, it's an interesting thing, right? But I did want to share that. So keep commenting. Join Sovereign if you can. It's open. I'm in it live until April 17th, which means that I'm answering comments and supporting you through that work, right? Um, and other than that, if you can, join Sovereign. Um, yeah, keep commenting. Um, thank you for being here. And um, I love you and I'll speak to you soon.